Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make a lemon meringue pie, and this is what it looks like. We have three layers. We have the crust on the bottom, we have this really light and creamy, kind of slightly tart lemon filling, and then on top we have a really nice sweet meringue. So, um, the first thing you will need is your uh, crust. Now, my mom always made a graham cracker crust, but today I'm going to actually use a pastry crust. Now, if you want to do that, you, it needs to be pre-baked. And I do have a recipe along with the video on the site that tells you exactly how to do it to this point. And the good thing is, if you're using you know, either type of crust, if you want, to kind of make this pie in stages. You could make your pastry crust, your grain cracker crust the day before and then just cover it and then that step will be done. And then for our lemon filling, this is a stovetop pudding. And whenever you're doing a stovetop pudding, it's best to have all your ingredients out. You don't want to be running around when you're uh, in the middle of making your pudding. So the first thing you will need to do is separate four large eggs. You want the yolks in one bowl and the whites in another. And what we're going to do is, is put the whites aside because we're going to use that for the meringue. And then you want to, like I said, bring your eggs to room temperature. Now four large egg yolks would be about 65 grams. And then, of course, we're making a lemon filling, so we need lemon lemon juice and we need the lemon zest. So uh, you will need one tablespoon which is about four grams of finely grated lemon zest and that really is the, the outside peel of your lemon and you will need a half a cup 120 milliliters of freshly squeezed lemon juice. Now how many lemons does that take? Well it really depends. Um, like this size I find two to three uh, lemons will give you a half a cup. It's always better to have a few extra because you never know. Um, and then, because you're going to take the outside skin, always wash your uh, lemons really well. If you can, buy organic. And then we're going to grate. So you could use a, just a box grater, the fine uh, part of your box grater, or I like to use this. these microplanes. They're really handy. And then you just kind of run that over the top of your lemon. Now you don't want to uh, grate the uh, white underneath because that's quite bitter, so don't do that. And then once you take all the skin off, which I find uh, one tablespoon is about two large lemons like this, and then you want to squeeze your lemons to uh, cut them in half and squeeze them. I just use one of these juicers and then I have a uh, measuring cup with a fine strainer because as you can see, there's seeds in the pulp, which we don't want. So put the, we're gonna put that aside because we're not gonna uh, add the lemon juice and zest until the end of our pudding. And along with that, you will need two tablespoons, 25 grams of butter. And I like to cut that into little um, small pieces so it like melts easier into our hot pudding. So we. In a, you want to have your um, egg yolks in a you know, heat-proof bowl. And then you will need a saucepan. Try to use a heavy bottom. It's always better. You don't want your, your uh, pudding to burn. And you will need a half a cup, no, sorry, one cup, which is 200 grams of granulated white sugar. And then you will need six tablespoons, which is 50 grams of cornstarch also called corn flour, and that's going to be our thickening. That, that's what thickens our pudding. Now you may say, what's the difference between lemon curd and a lemon filling? Mainly that cornstarch. I mean, a lemon curd, you don't um, have cornstarch. You don't have that thickener. And then also we want a little salt to bring out the flavor, so a quarter of a teaspoon, one gram. And then I'm just going to whisk that together. Now the other thing that's a little different between a, a lemon filling and a lemon uh, curd is I'm going to actually whisk in one and a half cups, which is 360 milliliters of water. I actually like to use like a hot to a boiling water because then I find it dissolves that sugar a little quicker. And 
The reason you'd say, well, why aren't we using lemon juice? Well, if I used like another one and a half cups of lemon juice, that, <laughs> that lemon filling is going to be really tart. And, I, and a lemon filling is not quite as tart and tangy as a lemon curd. So that's why, if you ask why we use in water, that's why. So what I'm going to do is gradually whisk that hot water into my sugar mixture. I mean, you could use uh, normal room temperature. A lot of recipes say that, but you know, my mom always uses the hot water, and I find it kind of dissolves that um, cornstarch to a lot easier if it's hot. Now, I'm going to put this over medium heat. We want to bring this up to a a boil, but a, you know, a, a slow. I don't want to. Um, like put it on high and bring it up too fast. I want to do it gradually and whisk all the time because I want that sugar to melt and the cornstarch to dissolve. So just whisk it all the time or you could stir it until it comes up to a boil. Okay, so I'm up to a boil, kind of adjust your heat and then keep stirring and you want to stir, stir, stir until it becomes quite thick and opaque in color, which I'm almost there, so it doesn't take very long. That looks good, and you kind of have that plop, plop kind of sound. I don't know how to describe it, but that looks good. So now I'm just going to, nice and thick, and take it off the heat for now. As you can see, that's what you're looking for. That makes that plop, plop sound. <laughs> And now we want to add the yolks into the hot mixture. So of course, what you don't want to do is just pour those yolks right in there because they'll start cooking. So what we want to do is kind of temper it. And so what, I'm going to take my whisk and just kind of break those yolks up. And then I'm going to take a little bit of my mixture here and add it in and whisk all the time. So hopefully my yolks don't start cooking. And then, I mean, if you did have that, you could just strain your mixture at the end. We could just strain the pudding and that would solve that problem because sometimes that happens. So what I'm gonna do now is, and I, I wanna whisk the whole time. I'm gonna gradually add my yolks. You really want to use a whisk for this. A spoon, you could if you have to. Okay, that looks good. As you can see, it's the yolks that are that's going to give our pudding that yellow color. So if yours doesn't look like mine, it's probably just the difference in the color of the yolks you're using. So now what we're going to do is just put this back on the heat for just a bit because we want to cook those yolks just a little more. Now we don't want a high heat here. We just want a medium, medium low, I would say, and just bring it up to a, just up to a boil, a low boil. And whisking all the time, of course. Okay, so we're, if you can see again, we kind of got that plop, plop, <laughs> those big bubbles that are kind of bursting. So that's, that's about all I'm going to uh, cook that. Turn off the heat and give it a good whisk. So now what we're going to do is just add in our butter. That'll be for richness of flavor there. And the zest, that gives, you know, it's the zest that really gives a, a, a lot of lemon flavor to the filling, or the filling. And then pour in our lemon juice. 
If you pour in the lemon juice at the end instead of the beginning, it really uh, keeps its sharp flavor. So that's why we're adding it at the end and not at the beginning with the water. And that's our filling. So what you want to do now, because we have to make our meringue. So I'm going to just cover this. Now normally you would just cover it right on there, but because I need that pot for my meringue, I'm going to transfer my filling just to a bowl. You don't have to do that at home. And then I'm going to cover it with plastic wrap right onto the surface so that uh, there's no uh, skin forming because we don't want that for our pie. So I'll just take care, put that on. And then I'm just going to wash my pot. And then when we come back, I'm going to show you how to make the meringue topping. The biggest problem people have with the lemon meringue pie is that there, a lot of times people will get a layer of moisture between the meringue and the filling which we call weeping. And while that can be caused from over whipping your egg whites, the biggest reason for that is that your meringue is not cooked through. And the reason why, the problem with that is normally you, you just beat your egg whites and sugar until stiff peaks. You put it on top of your filling and you put it in the oven and you bake it until the uh, meringue browns. But you know, the problem with that could be is while it's brown, the meringue may not be cooked through, especially in the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make what is called a Swiss meringue. And what that means is I'm going to heat my egg whites and sugar first and that and kind of heat it or what you would call cook it. So it's up to that temperature. So I don't even have to cook my, my pie after I do my meringue, I can just broil it or brown it on top. So what you will need is a saucepan of simmering water and you'll need a, I like a stainless steel bowl and you will need your four large egg whites. If you want to go by weight, that would be 120 grams of egg whites. And then you will need some uh, sugar, a half a cup, which is 100 grams of granulated white sugar and whisk that together along with I'm adding a table or a half a teaspoon sorry which is two grams of cream of tartar which will help to stabilize our whites and that means it's they don't dry out when you're whipping them if you don't have um, cream of tartar you could use an equal amount of lemon juice or some people just prefer to add a pinch of salt like a quarter of a teaspoon one gram of salt so now I'm just going to put this over simmering water. Now we do need to stir, whisk, and that what we're going to do is heat the whites, dissolve the sugar. We don't want to cook the whites. You don't want flecks of cooked egg in there. So you want to whisk it constantly and you don't want that, that water under there to be too hot. And what we're going to do is bring it up to it's really like hot if you, if you touch it. But the best way, I mean, is with a candy thermometer. And you want to bring it up to 160 Fahrenheit, which is 71 Celsius. And that, the reason we're taking up, like some recipes call for uh, a lower temperature. But 160 is the uh, temperature you need to reach for that to uh, kill off this, uh, any chance of salmonella, which, you know any risk of that. So that's why I'm taking it up to 160. So just keep, you know, whisking. And then I'm going to put my thermometer in there. And once we get to 160, we'll take it off the heat. Okay, we're at 160. So take it off the heat. That out. Make sure you clean the end of your thermometer. So that's what we look. It looks like. So now, what we're going to do is take this. I'm going to. We're going to whip our egg whites until they reach stiff peaks. So I'm just going to 
transfer this. Now, if you had a metal um, mixing bowl, then you could just, you know, use that over the uh, simmering water, and then you wouldn't have to transfer. But I'm using a glass bowl, so that's why I use the stainless steel and have to transfer. So now what we're going to do is just whip this. I'm going to start at slow speed, bring it gradually up to high speed, and just keep uh, whipping it until it reaches stiff peaks. Okay, let's check our meringue. So that looks good. Whether you can see that, kind of holds its peaks. Some people say, although I'm not going to do it, if you hold the bowl over your head, it should the meringue shouldn't fall out. But I don't want. To, I don't really want to try that. And then, so I like to flavor uh, my meringue. So I'm going to add a half a teaspoon, which is two grams of pure vanilla extract. If you prefer just a plain uh, meringue, you don't need to add that, or you could add some other type of flavoring. And I'm just going to beat that in. Okay, yep. Got that nice stiff peak like that. So we're done our meringue, and we have our pie crust, and we have our filling. Now, there's, been, there's a lot of debate. Should your, pie fill, should your lemon filling be hot when you put the meringue, or should it be cold, room temperature? Um, I've tried it different ways, actually, because some people say that another reason for that layer of moisture, that weeping, is because you're putting the meringue on a cold filling. Uh, so... But anyways, whether people, you believe that or not, I don't know. But I, I do find, I've tried it both ways, and I do find having the filling quite warm is the best way. Because then that, when you put the meringue on it, kind of adhere to the surface. So if your, your lemon filling, you know, you wanted to make it ahead of time or something, and it cooled off, then just reheat it gently till it's warm. And then just pour it in there. And just kind of spread it out. If you find you have beads of moisture, some people will say that they get beads of moisture on the top of the meringue after it's cooked and cooled. Now that usually is because you over whipped your uh, meringue. Kind of, kind of a, it can be a little complicated. So now I, I like to use two spoons and and I didn't mention, but if you found when you're filling, when you finished uh, cooking it, that you had little pieces of cooked egg, just strain it. I didn't do that because I didn't find any in mine. But just in case, just strain it and you're done. So now, another problem people find, say, is that their meringue shrinks. You know, you, they cook, put it in the oven, especially if you're baking it, and it shrinks. So one way to prevent that is when you're putting your meringue onto your filling, go right up to the crust. And then kind of also to make sure that meringue adheres to the, the filling, kind of press down to get rid of any air pockets. And then just go all the way around doing that. I like to start around the edges and then fill in the center. See, I'm just kind of going to the edge, make sure it adheres to the crust, and then pushing down slightly to um, get rid of any air pockets. Okay, so we're almost done. Like I said, just kind of pat down, make sure it's all the way around. And making sure it goes right up to the crust. You know, some people say the meringue just slips right off their pie after it cools. That'll kind of adhere it. And the other reason some people say that happens is because you're not putting your meringue on a hot filling. So I err on the side, I think, of using a warm to hot filling. I think it's the best, what I've decided. Okay, so then we have our meringue. And if you want, you can kind of, you know, get really decorative with the back of a spoon at peaks. Kind of do how you want. And then all that's left now is to broil it. 
Or if uh, you have one of those handheld propane torches, you could use that. Actually, that's probably better because you can get them more even, but I don't have mine here, so I'm going to use the broiler. So the broiler means your top element, have it on high, have the, um, at the rack at a good, so there's, it's not like, you don't want the top of this pie touching your to that top hot element. Uh, you want a little bit of space. And I find when I'm broiling, I kind of keep turning. And hopefully, if we do it right, we won't burn the top. We just want a nice golden brown. So we'll give it a try. I'm going to go with that. There we go. So, our pie, our lemon meringue pie is done. I think it looks pretty good. Now, if I take this and shake it, you can see that that lemon filling is still a little, uh, it's, it hasn't firmed up. So I don't want to cut it right now. What I like to do is let it sit at least a couple hours. That will give the... Uh, filling time to firm up so when I cut it I can get a you know pretty good slice. Uh, some people like their lemon meringue pie cold or at least chilled a little if you like that if you prefer that then I would let it sit a, you know a couple hours and then you could put it into the uh, fridge for a little bit to chill it. So when we come back I will cut a slice. It's been about two hours, so let's cut a slice. So using a sharp knife. And then I like to have a damp cloth and just wipe off my knife in between slices. Where you get a little cleaner slice. Okay, let's see if we got that. That first slice is always the hardest to get out, I find. Okay, we almost got it there. Maybe a little extra, but that's okay. So there we have it. Let's see, well, if you can see it here. So we have the nice crust, we have the beautiful lemon filling and the meringue, which you can see is nicely attached to the uh, lemon filling. So now let's try a little bit here. Uh, the crust, my love the crust. You know, you can see why a lemon meringue pie is, is a real, is very popular. I mean, that meringue, it's sweet, it's kind of it's all fluffy, and it really tempers the, the, you know, it's not a really, really too sharp flavor of lemon, but it, you know, it's a nice balance there. The, the tartness of the lemon and the sweetness of the meringue. And then you can't go, me, you can't go wrong with a nice buttery crust to, to um, go along with the rest. So try this. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Thank you.